Okay, I'm going to answer the question for you on how to make chocolate ganache. And what is chocolate ganache? Chocolate ganache is like a chocolate spread or a filling, or it's something that you can put in between layers of cake, something you can put in parfaits, something you can put in trifles. You can do a lot of things with this. How many ways are there to make it? Only a couple of ways to make the basic ganache. But how many ways to flavor it? Hundreds of ways. Good examples would be Grand Marnier, Armoretto, probably the probably the two most popular I can think of, you know? So what's the basic formula? The one I'm going to show you is one pound of semi-sweet chocolate, putting in a bowl, and one cup of heavy cream. That's fairly easy to remember. And I'm going to plastic wrap this, and I'm going to set it over a double boiler. Now, can you make this in a microwave? Absolutely. But this would be the old school way of doing it. And I'm going to set it in a saucepan of boiling water I have over here. And we'll come back to it on a time elapsed basis when it's melted and just whisk it smooth and then it's done. Then we put it away and store it for when we're ready to use it. Okay. Um, in this particular case, we're making this ganache for this class to be used on the top of a flourless chocolate cake. We're going to use it in a, par in a parfait, and we're going to use it in the bottom of a fresh fruit strip tart. So I'm going to show you three ways right off the top in this class that you can utilize uh, your ganache. So we'll come back when that gets melted, 10 minutes, give or take. We'll be right back. Okay, the chocolate ganache is completely melted. I mixed it together on the stove. I'm going to bring it over here and I'll make a couple of comments and we're going to store it. So, we still have hot water in here, see? And we don't need this anymore. But you'll notice how I put the bottom of this pot on a rag instead of directly on my cutting board. Because that carbon from the flame on the stove dirties your cutting board. You don't want that. Okay, so... I mentioned to you, here's your ganache. Now this is hot ganache, so it's a little softer than that spreadable toothpaste consistency that we're going to end up with, with this particular item, okay? So I said something about flavoring it. I said, I think I gave you examples of Grand Marnier and Armoretto. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little couple tablespoons of vanilla to this right now. I typically, I put vanilla in a lot of confectionery desserty type things just because it tastes good, you know. So let's mix our vanilla up in here. And this is basically done. And I'm going to put it in a little storage pan. And we're going to put it away. And I'm going to put it away with this spoon in it. While it's getting cold, I'm going to go in every once in a while. I'm going to mix it up because I'm going to put this on the flourless chocolate cake. Now, if you refrigerate this, this will harden up. So whenever you're going to use your ganache, you need to temper it slightly so that it gets to the texture that you want. All right. So I'm going to put this in the fridge. And the reason I'm going to mix it, I don't want it getting cold on the outsides of it and getting hard. Then I end up mixing hard pieces into it. So I'm going to put this in the fridge. I'm going to go back and forth once every 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And just give it a little mix so that it stays the same cooling temperature throughout all of it during the cooling process. Okay? Then we'll use it a little later in this class on top of the flourless chocolate cake. So there you have it. Basic chocolate ganache minus whole butter, which many of the ganaches to include cream and butter. This one, I'm using just the cream, okay? So there you have it, chocolate ganache. It's good for all kinds of stuff.